This is a fairly short one, so we're going to dive straight into it. But before I do, let me just say, I'm Harlet, this is all I'm saying is. Here we tell true stories. On a Wednesday, it's strange and fiction, and on a Sunday, it's true crime. Disclaimers are a must before we start. This is a true story. It involves real people, and then real people have real families. So although I do want you to share it, and I do want you to comment, please do be a little bit sensitive as you do so. 78-year-old Phyllis Grant was a regular churchgoer. She was described as a matriarch of the community. One neighbour said, She was very involved in the community. She was always saying hi, and always tending to her rose bushes, and her holly bushes, or cooking Jamaican spicy chicken and fish dishes. She was a strong-willed, independent, and fearless woman. She lived here for decades. She cared about this area, and she cared about the community. Another neighbour said she was a bubbly, cheerful, and smiling person. She moved to London from Jamaica in 2002. Miss Grant was a mother of five and a beloved grandmother. She'd worked most of her life in hospitals, especially in and around London. One of her grandchildren was Donovan Miller, and honestly, I couldn't find all that much about him. But as we go through this case, you will learn a lot about him. In January 2021, Phyllis had got that worldwide illness thing that was going around quite a lot. I'm not going to say what it is, because YouTube. But as a result of this illness, she spent weeks in hospital. And regardless of what Phyllis had, at 76 year old, spending two weeks in a hospital bed is hard to recover from, as well as recovering from the illness. She was frail, she was struggling with her mobility, and she was walking with a walking stick. I'm not sure if this was before the illness, or only after it, but when she came out of hospital, she was being cared for by a grandson, and he was laying ears in between the family members and the hospital. In Apparently, we were taking really good care of her, making some really good meals, making sure she ate well. Then on the 25th of March 2021, Donovan's sister were working from home. She got a phone call from Donovan asking if he could go around to her house, and explaining that he just needed to cool off. So she agreed, as you would, and then when he got there, she was having a new bed delivered. So he helped to bring the bed in and stuff, and he stayed there for quite a while. They had lunch together, Donovan, his sister, and a flatmate. During the time that he was there, he moaned and grumbled about his grandmother. It was nothing too much, just kind of the usual stuff. Um, he moaned that she was a hoarder. He was complaining that she was delaying the jab from that thing that was going around the world. And his sister noticed that he had a cut on his finger, fairly fresh cut, so she put a plaster on for him. But all in all, she didn't really notice anything bizarre or weird or unusual about his behaviour. Nothing to cause concern. All were pretty normal. At some point, Donovan goes home, and later on that evening, she received a text message from Donovan that basically just him telling her that he loved her. Then at 10pm, the same day, Donovan Miller for 999. He told the operator that he'd like to report a murder of a family member. He said the person that had been murdered was his grandmother, Phyllis Grant, and that it was him that had killed her the night before by choking her while she slept. He then said that there'd been a tussle, and... He'd been strangling her for a while, but then he had to use a vase to knock her out. He'd hit her on the head a few times with a vase. I pronounced that as vase. I don't know why I pronounced it as vase. The operator had asked what instigated it, and he replied, I'm just going to say the truth. I've come a long way on my journey, and enough is enough. It's now about half past ten at night, and paramedics and police arrive at the flat. As they do, Donovan walks out with his hands raised in the air. He was arrested and obviously didn't resist the arrest. He told the police that he was dependent on cocaine and he had no mental health issues. And that's quite an important part. He's dependent on cocaine and he has no mental health issues. He also said, I don't know if this is worth anything. I did rape her as well, for what it's worth, yesterday and today. So in response, the police further arrested him for sexual penetration of a corpse. Phyllis Grant was discovered by the police in the living room. It was dark. She was underneath a blanket, kneeling against the side of the bed, face down with her chin resting on the side of the bed and her arms outstretched. She was dressed in a dark grey navy blue tracksuit and there were large amounts of blood around her head, on the bed and on the floor. Life was formally pronounced extinct at 10.43pm. Despite all the blood around Phyllis, the police said it was quite clear that the flat had been cleaned. The broken vase that had been used to hit her over the head was in the bin at the front of the house, exactly where Donovan said it was. But that wasn't the only thing of interest that the police found. There were a few other things while they were searching the house that they recovered. 
These items include a bloodstained t-shirt, a mop bucket with bloodstained mop, and a half empty bottle of rum on the kitchen side. But most interestingly, in Donovan's room, the police found a writing pad where he had written, it's time to go, in bold on the front cover. There was a lot of writing inside, most of which was apparently incoherent. But there were references to Jesus, a child sex ring, as well as ambushing and kidnapping children. In the writing, Donovan also referred to himself as an alien. He wrote that he'll leave this life and go back home soon. Another page had a list. The items on that list were action is process, clear out the body, deep clean, focus on moving forward, integrity. The post-mortem of Phyllis's body found a catalogue of injuries. These injuries included a gaping laceration to the left scalp, which was over half a centimetre deep. Numerous abrasions to the face, numerous wounds to the face and head, which were consistent with being caused by a broken piece of ceramic, semen with a complete DNA profile from Donovan was found on anal swabs, and a dissection of the scalp also revealed three large sites of bruising, and there were also bruising to a left breast, a shoulder, right buttock, left tricep, and right hamstring. She also sustained two injuries to her hands, which were consistent with defensive wounds. After he was taken into custody, Donovan displayed psychotic symptoms and described feeling as if he was in a haze. He told the police that he'd had recent thoughts of self-harm and consumed cocaine before murdering his grandmother. Despite appearing eerily calm, officers noticed that his behaviour became increasingly unusual as he began to ask them for drugs. During the final interview, he was seen to snigger at a point when the officers were asking questions about killing his grandmother. Donovan Miller appeared in court by video link from the John Howard Centre Secure Psychiatric Unit. He did deny murder, but throughout everything, he maintained his stance. He made a plea of guilty of manslaughter and sexual penetration of a corpse. Due to evidence provided by three psychiatrists, the Crown Prosecution Service accepted his plea of manslaughter. Due to the evidence provided by three psychiatrists, the Crown Prosecution Service accepted his plea of guilty for manslaughter. In regards to his sentencing, it was placed on the sex offenders register for an indefinite period, and he's been given an indefinite hospital order with restrictions. If you don't know what that means, hospital orders are used if a medical practitioner suggests that an offender suffered from a medical disorder at the time of the offence. Basically, he can't be released from that secure treatment centre without the permission of the Minister of Justice. That's under the sections 37 and 41 of the Mental Health Act. I don't know when this was, whether it was before court or after, but his sister said that he was known to the family as Junior, and she confirmed that he was the grandmother's main carer. When asked about life before the murder, she said she believed that her brother took good care of his grandmother. As I said earlier, she said that he fed her well, he really did look after her. But she also described him as a fit and healthy person who, as far as she was concerned, did not use drugs. She said there was no history of violence or mental health problems. So there you go, that's all I've got for you. First of all, there were a few people last week saying that the sound were a bit muffled. And I think it was the way I were talking, I weren't very well. And I'm still not well now, my sinus are bunged and my nose is blocked. So I hope the sound is a bit better than it were last week. Um, this case is really hard. It's strange, it's bizarre. And it's strange and bizarre because it's got drugs in it. It's got alcohol in it. It's got psychosis in it. It's got rape in it. There is so many different things. And there's not one person that's come forward and said, all right, Donovan, we're a bad guy. I know quite often they don't. You always, <laughs> they can be the worst person on earth. And if they, they're the one that's died, someone will always come forward and say, oh, you were lovely. But my point is, don't get me wrong, there's not many things that I've seen that said he was a lovely guy. And I'm not trying to say he's either which way, but it really does sound like something's finally clicked in his head. And it has also come to my attention that for once, they haven't blamed the drug. Because quite often in these cases, they'll, they'll put the drug at the forefront and say, look at what that drug did. And in this case, they haven't. They've gone, you're a problem. You, you're, you, you need help. And I'm going to have a look in more detail at the um, hospital order. Because I don't understand how that can work. Is it potential that it can get out in 10 years? And would it be fair? Do you think it'd be fair if you had a psychotic breakdown if he had severe mental issues but in 10-15 years despite how many people he'd murdered they decided that he were now healed they were now better do you think that would be fair 
a lot of news articles, and I don't know about in court, but a lot of news articles said that it was cocaine-induced psychosis. Now, to be fair, I've never heard of that. I didn't even know that were possible. I'm sure many people in the comments will be telling me it's not possible. I just had a look, and I'm, I couldn't find the answer, but I'm fairly sure it's not a psychedelic. So in my eyes, you can't blame that on that. But like I said, I didn't... I don't know if I saw anything official from a court that said that. And if it... I don't think that's what the judges said. Because if that's what the judges said, it'd have sent him to prison, not hospital. They'd have sent him to hospital because he's obviously got things going on. Um, and although the judges have said that, look, it weren't the drug, drugs were involved, so I do just want to push that of... We'll do it before, like, of the Lauren Bloomer case. Um... I'm not here to tell you what to and not to do. I don't condone drugs. But I'm certainly not going to tell you how to live your life. Because I know that people that do will defend it to high hell. And people that don't will do the opposite. But what I am going to say. I'm not going to put the what to do about drugs disclaimers. At the end of this and the helpful information. Because like I said I don't think it was the cocaine. I don't think the judge said it was the cocaine. Um... But I did just want to say, look, if, if you are going to do drugs, it's not about whether that drug caused that one issue. It's about knowing that drugs can be dangerous if they're not respected. So although I'm not condoning the use of drugs at any point, I do want you to understand that if you are using drugs, you have to respect that it is a drug. On that note, I'll see you next week for the Christmas video. Can't wait to read your thoughts. Till next week, guys. Oh dear, I almost forgot to say massive congratulations to Shauna, Faxa and Rebecca for winning the Christmas giveaway. Enjoy guys, I'll get out to you very shortly. Bye!